the community letter also mentioned when you're on a customer side, if the customer is, is willing to allow you to discharge that relatively clean water from their lawn or flower beds, that's fine. Keep in mind, too, that if that particular customer is an industrial site that's subject to stormwater permitting requirements by their state, then the power washing activity must be addressed in that facility stormwater pollution prevention plan. That's something that, that the washer's customer needs to follow through on, and they might not always think to do that. Um, charity car washes, there's an answer to that. There's good information on the Southwest Car Wash Association's website, and it's also available through TCEQ staff. What we recommend is that those charities, those fundraising groups, partner with a stationary car wash facility. Partner together, that way the, the group doing the fundraising gets to do their routine, they, they still get the awareness of their group out there in the public, kids get to get wet and you know, wear their shorts, and it, it's really fun for them. But that car wash owner, and it could also be set up for a mobile washer or power washer or something like that if they have a facility or means to do so, but for the car washes, that car wash owner has an opportunity to generate goodwill, to demonstrate that they are working with the community and with that particular charity. So there's, there is an opportunity for win-win solutions to some of those problems. I also want to add a warning, though I don't have any clarification on this for you. Be very careful about the use of the steam and even cold water. In some cases, enough cold water discharge would be a violation in the state of Texas. That water is chlorinated. And depending on what surface water you're near, or a pond, something like that, it could cause fish kill if you discharge enough cold water. So just need to be sensitive to those things. Um, and again, they've already touched on the comments about steam and the temperature of the water. It may be necessary for you to recapture that water and allow it to cool down a little bit before discharging in the sanitary sewer system. Any other comments? How about plagiarism of uh, some of their ordinances? <laughs> That's what they're there for. <laughs> it's public. Any other questions? Thank you very much. When we were in Waco at the MS4 conference, we ran out of time and I had to skip all these photos. After I got through talking about the wastewater capture slide, when I went to this next one, I saw I was out of time and I skipped through about a dozen photos. So anyway, for bonus material, we want to go over these photographs and this technology. Water dams control the wastewater for pickup by sump pump. The wastewater passes through a wire screen filter before entering the holding tank and the wastewater is discharged as sand trap by gravity flow. In this particular case, we got water control devices right along here, which are basically portable dams. Uh, it comes down here to where a sump pump picks up the water. It discharges it over here to a wire mesh screen to a filter. They could have put an oil absorbent boom in front of this, but this contractor didn't. From there, it is uh, discharged into a holding tank back on the truck. This hose hooks up to this tank, and then the contractor pulls over and discharges into a port there that goes to sanitary sewer. It actually leads to the sand trap. This next slide shows an oil absorbent boom, a vacuum boom, and then a portable dam behind it to, uh, cap, to make sure there's no accidental wastewater discharge. Note that there's no oil sheen after the oil absorbent boom. I recommend that if a contractor's going to be where he can be seen that he put down two oil absorbent booms, but if you can see right there, the oil sheen is in front of the boom and there's no oil sheen after the boom and you got the vacuum boom that's picking up 100% of the water and you notice the pavement is dry after it 
this secondary containment device is just for an accidental discharge. Uh, it goes up into a vacuum sludge filtering system with a 200 micron bag filter. There's a sump pump in the bottom that automatically comes on that discharges to the sanitary sewer or to a holding tank. And that particular, all that technology is legal to go into the sanitary sewer of the city of Fort Worth. You got your oil absorbent filter for an oil sheen. You got a bag filter inside the vacuum boom. I mean the uh, vacuum sludge filtering system and it will just like turn on a cop copy machine it'll run and run and run and you don't have to have anybody attending it. This is a steel eagle surface cleaner that hooks up to a, a vacuum system and it will capture 99% of all the water. You can put out between 5 to 10 gallons a minute and it'll pick up the water. Just showing you different technologies. This is a filter tub for kitchen exhaust cleaning. They take their grease filters, drop them down into this tub and then they clean them there. This particular case we cleaned a restaurant on, on a barge above a lake and at, at the bottom of it we had that hooked up to a vacuum sludge filtering system which discharged the wastewater back on land and we captured 100% of the wastewater. This is just another simple way to show you of getting into the uh, sanitary sewer being legal. You got an oil absorbent boom in front of your sump pump which just has a window screen around the bottom of it to keep, keep out the sand and then you got a portable dam, um, uh, pardon me, a drain cover here in other words to keep the water from going down into the storm drain. And in this particular case, that technology, there's another example of what's legal to go into the sanitary sewer of the city of Fort Worth. These are sanitary sewer drain covers and storm drain covers are almost always marked. Uh, they're city property and they're always illegal for the contract cleaner to discharge into and they're generally found in the middle of the street. That's an example of a sanitary sewer cleanout port. A lot of times those are either cast iron and they're generally about f four inches and they're basically between the home or, or the business and the uh, sewer line going, the sanitary sewer line going down the center of the street so that the uh, line can be cleaned out if, it's, if it gets clogged and it's called a sewer clean out port. That's another example of drain blockers. That's a heavy material rather than being water filled and it's sticky on, on the bottom and they uh, work real well and they're excellent. That's a uh, wash pit. This was made out of a tarp. It's got a Coca-Cola truck. This picture was made in 1991. They got a sump pump back here in the corner to where they pick that water up and discharge it to the holding tank which it was trucked into a sanitary sewer system. And the other thing we might notice is that every wrinkle in that tarp is like a portable little dike and you'll get silt and sludge will fall out on uh, the dam and then you can pick it up with a scoop shovel. This is a, a wading pool, just a child's wading pool. You can buy it. Kmart will also form a real tight seal. It's not professional quality, but it works real well. I'm trying to show you there that it does. It's, this is not rocket science. And if the water inside the pool it's higher than the water outside of the pool. You'll have your tight water seal. Another case of uh, where the water was filled up on the in, inside of the pool. So you have going through an oil absorbent boom down here. You got a window screen on the bottom of your sump pump. Again, that's legal to discharge into the sanitary sewer of the city of Fort Worth. Here we have a window screen that's been put down under a grate to do the filtration for the, for the sand, debris, and leaves. And then you have an oil absorbent filter around here on the outside. As long as the contractor is doing cold water washing, he can run that down into the storm drain. Again, in the city of Fort Worth. That particular technology is accepted in probably 80% of the phase two areas today. That's in 2008.